Hello? 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 Hey, uh, could you talk amongst yourselves for a moment, please? Oh, not yet. Look at you guys. Hey, can you get the, the lights in the back for me as well when you do that? Thanks. Yeah, not right now, though. Hey, guys. Uh, awesome. Hey, I didn't get to see I was uh, being disrespectful and chatting with my wife when Nate said if there were any first-time visitors. If, if, is there any, who has just started coming maybe in the last couple months? Maybe just this year you've started coming to Abundant Life. Can you just throw your hand up for me? Because I don't get to see very often. Hey, what's up? Nice. Guys, hey, nice to see you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Man, it's so good to see you guys. It's so good to uh, be part of a family that's growing. There's a hair in my coffee, and I don't like that. Whew, that was a close one. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, how many know God is really, really, really good, and he loves us a lot? Um, I was reminded this week of the goodness of God. It's great to see Bob and Nancy back with us. Bob was supposed to have a couple back surgeries after the first one. Uh, God just really did a work on him and felt great. So just one surgery is better than two surgeries, right? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it's good to have you guys back feeling good. Uh, I want to encourage you, though, if you didn't have the opportunity to be with us last week, uh, uh, jump on YouTube. Um, and see that there's a link on our website or I think there's a link on our Facebook page as well uh, to get connected but uh, I had the opportunity this week to be down in Texas with some of my heroes in the faith Pastor Juan Carlos and and Ricky and my dad and Bill and Pastor Jeff um, got to stay in Jeff's house and really just have some good time with him um, and just releasing some things over me and and uh, praying over me uh, it was an amazing opportunity uh, a couple of our guys, Casey and Pablo and Laura, uh, are still down there. Uh, Jenny and I flew home last night so um, we could be with you because there's just no other place I would rather be <laughs> than right here with you. Yep. And I mean it. <laughs> if you didn't get a chance to watch last week, I'm going to do the just a very short short recap. Um, we're starting a series called The Hard Stuff, where we're going to talk about things that we don't normally talk about in church, some things that maybe we, um, we bypass in order to be politically correct or, you know, in, as a 501c3, which is a religious organization recognized by the government, there's not a lot you can um, say when it comes to politics and things like that, which is okay with me because I don't like politics anyway. And so I'm happy with the, the rule the way it is. But, um, but there are things and, and thought process and things that I want to talk about within the church because we have an opportunity to respond uh, in a new way. Um, but last week we talked, and the question was, is your hope in what comes next? Or is your hope in what is happening now? And we looked at it from the point of salvation versus Christianity, where... There is an absolute truth that I can tell you that is Jesus saves. Now, whether someone agrees with that or someone steps into that or someone um, um, fulfills the call of their life to step into the salvation that Jesus has provided doesn't change the fact that it's an absolute truth that Jesus saves by what he did. There's no question. There's no, there's no thought process involved. It's Jesus saves. It is an absolute truth. It's a truth claim, but it's not a truth claim about me. It's a truth claim about who he is. It's a truth claim about God. It's about who he is, what he's done, what he will do when I stand before him. Jesus to say, saves is not dependent upon me, but I have the opportunity to step into that truth. Does that make sense? But Christianity is not, not the same as salvation. Christianity is not Jesus saves. To say that I'm a Christian is not a truth claim about Jesus. It's a truth claim about me. And it puts personal responsibility on my life and my choices and things I say and the things I do. And the reason that we're going through this is we have an opportunity in this season to shine like we've never shown before, to impact like we've never impacted before. But it's going to take some, some, some key things in our lives. It's going to take making some difficult choices and standing up in, in the face of some cultural and society societal issues that that 
we don't need to be coming alongside and we don't need to be agreeing with. To say I'm a Christian is a true claim. Both claims that Jesus saves and that I'm a Christian are verifiable. You can, it, they can be looked at, explained, looked at, and understood to be true. But those claims aren't interchangeable. Just because I believe that Jesus saves doesn't make me automatically a great person. Because I'm saved, that doesn't mean I'm a Christian. Some of you are like, wait a second, hold on, Pastor Gene taught me a long time ago. These two claims are not interchangeable. They're both verifiable, but they're not interchangeable. We talked about the scripture last week that says, work out your salvation with prayer and trembling, with fear and trembling. It doesn't say work for your salvation. It says you're saved. Now things should be different. You have to go from this place and you have to work out what that looks like. I've said this before from this pulpit and there's been people who've disagreed with me, but I personally believe that the work of Jesus was absolute and enough and made access to salvation very easy. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth, and you shall be saved. But the Christian walk is very different. Now, can you not walk out your Christianity and still be saved? We'll talk about that theology at some other day, because I'm not getting into that. But your salvation should push you to look like something, and what you look like should be enveloped in this umbrella called Christianity. But just because you say yes to Jesus doesn't mean you're saved. Or doesn't mean you're a Christian. It means you're saved. I just messed everybody up there because it was complicated to begin with. And, and we talked about the common ground within salvation that leads to a life lived within Christianity. Which looks like a life reflecting the work of Jesus. And I'm going to go on from that today, and I'm going to talk about some, some hard things. And I talked about what it looks like to work out your salvation. That it looks like something. It looks like love. It looks like, like being at peace with one another. It looks like serving each other. It looks like uh, speaking life. It looks like treating people respectfully, no matter what their background or their affiliation. Whether they love Jesus or don't love Jesus, we treat people the way he's called us to treat people. You see, all crude of... Everything that we do and everything we say is fruit that begins with salvation, but that stems through the life of Jesus. Today, I want to talk to you about a deeper level. If you're with me today and you have your Bibles, if you could go, I'm going to go to Mark chapter 4 for just a moment. It's going to be the foundation of, of where we go. He said, also, he said to them, is a, lamp brought to be un- is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it which should come to light. If anyone hears, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to who, <laughs> sorry, and to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, what he has will be taken away from him. Father God, I pray today for clarity, for your Holy Spirit to come. To release your heart in us and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. You know, the kingdom of God, as we talk about this, is all, it's all about contrasts. I preached this about a month ago, about the contrasts of life. About how living a Christian life looks different than living a life in the world. Well, it should anyway. 
about life versus death, about good fruit versus bad fruit. Everything in life is about, if you, if you want to impact, it's about contrast, making yourself stand out, making it set apart. The Bible tells us that we are chosen people, correct? We're a chosen generation, set apart for the good works of the Father. Now, as we look at this and as we talk about Christian life and what it should look like, I, I want you to understand that as church, as a church, as a people of God, there will come circumstances, storms, and waves in all of our lives. The Bible is one of the greatest promises in the Bible is in this life you will have trouble. John chapter 16, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. And in those times of trouble is the greatest opportunity for contrast. How do you know that we are in a key moment in our culture, in our society today? I mean, absolutely key moment. There are things that I've heard this week that I never thought I would ever hear in my lifetime. There are situations and struggles that my children are facing today that I, I would never thought they would ever be walking through. There is a kingdom of darkness. And it has become ever, ever more prevalent, especially with our focus in our country. Especially with the things we're saying and, and, and the people who have voice. It's, it's becoming very dark. I want to do something today that, that it might be fun, it might not be. If you have kids with you, just kind of pull them close. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on the lights off. Is that cool? Perfect. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so can I get, can you, guys, can you help me right back over there? And there's some lights up here. I want to turn all the, if you have kids, grab them close uh, on the screen. Can you just black it out? Zach? Whoa. Oh, see, art team. Wait, just look at the art before they turn it off. I'm going to wait. Now what do you do? You get out. <laughs> Oh, those lights in the, all the way off, brother. Look at you. Nice job. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I can just see smartphones all across. That's all I see. What you see right now is not, should not bring up a sense of fear. What you see now should raise up within you the fact that you have a greater opportunity than you ever have before in the history of the world. To be a light. To be a bright light. You guys look good. It's like I'm hunting right now. You guys are. <laughs> this light is all the brighter because of the darkness around it. This light can be seen from a long ways away because of the darkness around it. Now listen, darkness has zero power over light. Zero. Darkness cannot get darker. It is dark. But once light is introduced, the level of darkness cannot stand in the face of a light shining. You want to make it brighter? What do you get your phone out? Just hit your home screen button and just lift it up. Turn on a flashlight. Whoa. What just happened to darkness in this room? Darkness has less effectiveness if light is shining. You see, darkness is not a commentary in and of itself because darkness in and of itself is nothing. Darkness is a commentary of the light that's being shown. And if darkness is getting greater in the earth, it's not a commentary of how evil the earth is. It's a commentary of where did the light go? If I can get some lights to come back on because I can't preach with a headlamp all in the morning. 
Throw those lights on for me, buddy. I appreciate it. Good job. <laughs> Ma'am, can you turn your earrings off, please? <laughs> Yeah, you can get the outside lights too. Some people, if they're taking notes or need to read their Bible. Darkness is not a commentary of itself because darkness in and of itself is nothing. You think the enemy has power, the king of darkness? He's basically the king of nothing. The prince of darkness? What is darkness? It's the absence of light. So what power does he have in and of itself other than what's given to him by people who hold lights? Do you understand that today? That's an important concept for us as Christians to understand is that we, do, we, are not, we are not reactionary to what darkness says. We have the answer for whatever comes at us in the form of darkness. It's light. He says here, Mark says, he said, is a lamp brought to be under a basket or under a bed? So my question is, if, if darkness is increasing and the, the commentary has to be, okay, what is happening to the light? Somebody turned a switch off. Somebody hid the light that I carry under a basket. I must have put it under a bed. I must have done something. I must not be thinking clearly. I must not be, be exactly thinking the way I should think or acting the way I should act. Because if I was, darkness would have no power. You see, in our churches today, we preach the message that I preached last week of Jesus saves. This is an absolute truth statement. We preach Jesus saves, and then we preach the grace of God can fix everything else, so don't worry about it. The message of the church has been so watered down, it's... it's, Yes, there's opportunity for salvation. You need salvation. I love evangelism. I love seeing people come into the knowledge of Christ. I love seeing people like today when we're in worship uh, visit us or, or come and say, listen, I don't have no clue what that is, but I know that that's what I, I wanted and I needed today. My heart is, is filled and, I, you know, there's a joy. There's something within me. I understand that in, the, in this presence, all this happens. But there's so many, the, the message of the church has been so... They've placed their light in a basket. How do I know this? Because it's getting darker. You see, we preach the message of Jesus' life, but we forget what Jesus preached. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus came for the salvation of mankind so that we could have access to the Father. But while he was here on this earth, what did he preach? We see the, we see the people, we, we, we preach the cross and we preach the resurrection. Which is absolute and vital to the message. But we, we forget the words that he spoke. You see, he didn't just come to die. He came to live. And then be the perfect sacrifice. What empowered the perfect sacrifice? It was his life. What made his sacrifice perfect? The life he lived. Come on, somebody's got to get that. What made the sacrifice of Jesus perfect was not that he was sent from the Son. It's that he was obedient to God. We have no problem with the fact that Jesus saves, but we get hung up on the message of Jesus, which was shown to us by him loving prostitutes and eating with unrighteous people and calling out sin and revealing hypocrisy and preaching repentance, while at the same time extending healing, exuding love, demonstrating what it looked like to be part of a family, to be a discipler and to be discipled. 
Everybody's okay with Jesus saves. Not, not everyone's okay with go find, going and finding people that smell really bad and holding them, praying for them, clothing them. We're okay inside of our church, feeling good about our worship service. But I don't see a lot of darkness inside of our church. So where does your light need to shine? <laughs> Where it's already light? You don't come into a house when the lights are turned on and be like, I need a flashlight. We're not looking for dark places anymore. We're looking for easy places. I'm not just talking about us as a church. I know me personally, I'm being pushed. I'm being transformed into this. I grew up in church culture too. I'm so grateful for the culture I grew up in. I'm so grateful for the foundations of Gene and Pastor Steve. Who showed me who God really was and to hear his voice. But it's not enough. It just isn't. Because darkness is still advancing. And I just declare that in my city, no. No. Where God has given me authority and put my feet to tread, I say no. You want to come at me with negativity? You want to come at me with division? You want to come at me with with law, with whatever? I know some things that against such there is no law. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. It's time that we get a little bit uncomfortable with the seats that we've been in. I don't have, you know, I should have warned you before I started preaching today, but it's all right. I told you we're going to talk about hard stuff, but I'm not starting with the world. I'm starting with us. Some of you were really excited when we were like, yeah, he's going to talk about some hard issues and we're going to call sin, sin, and it's going to be what it is. Yeah, but I'm going to call it out in us first. I'm going to plop my heart here on the table real quick, and then we'll figure out the rest after that. So just stick your toes out a little further, because this is who we are. You see, we're going to talk about hard stuff, the issues. We're going to talk about some cultural things. In, in the weeks to come, not all today, spiritual things. We're going to talk about some political things. But we can't talk about what's going on out there until we challenge what's going on in here. You know, you, you'd love for me to, to call out you know, all the sexual sin that we're seeing in media and, and out there. But we're not willing to look how pornography is rampant within the church. You want me to talk about media and politics and lying and manipulating when manipulation and lying is so prevalent within the church because every single one of us today, I I won't say that, that's an absolute statement. Some of us today came into this place with a mask on because we're so afraid, so we have to lie and say, no, we're good, this is happening, this was, if we can't be who we are in the church, how am I going to call that out somewhere else? Thank you. You want to call you want me to call out hypocrites and liars and thieves and all these other things. But we'll do anything to feel accepted. We'll hide our lights. We'll refuse to shine. We'll wait till Sunday morning to get right with God. See, Christian walk looks different. You guys would love for me to say, okay, where do we need to stand on social issues of our day? Like, 
immigrants and refugees. I'm not willing to talk about that until we can learn to love the people that are across the aisle from you. Until you learn how to go next door and give your neighbor some food. Because what are we going to fix if we can't fix ourselves? This doesn't feel good, but it feels right. It doesn't, get, it doesn't feel good to really take a good look and see how self-centered and how selfish we can be. <laughs> We'd rather see the problems in the world because it makes our sin look smaller. But today I want to challenge you to step away from a life of comparison with the world. We're not better because we're just a little bit better than they are. God has given us a few things. God has given us some, some direction that if we follow, man, you can make a difference. Man, you can live a life that is just so stinking fruitful. You can live a life that we liked, we talked about this morning that's just a fragrance to him. And not just when we come here, when you go to work, when you're sitting at home at night. When you're around people who are lost and hurting and in a very dark place, oftentimes we shut off our light because we're like, well, we don't want to make them feel bad about where they are. When really you could just flip the light on in their life. So afraid of being stinking PC and and the problem really isn't the problem really isn't in the world and society and culture. The problem is in our belief system. Because the honest to God truth is, if you really believed that you carried what He says you carried, your life would look different. I really believed everything that Jesus says about me, my life would look different. Don't think I'm just talking to you today. I'm talking to us. This is an us problem. This is a we problem. This is every single one of us, whether you want to think about it or whether you want to believe it or not. This is your problem and this is my problem. But I live this life of comparison where I feel like I'm okay because I'm not that bad. Am I by myself this morning? Is anyone else with me? I don't cuss as much as that dude in the office, so I really don't need to shine a light. I'm just going to not cuss. You know, I, I don't drink as much as that dude, so I think I'm good. I treat my wife respectfully, well, more respectfully than what I see on TV or You know, the shows that I watch that are, you know, pouring into my life, they're not, I mean, yeah, she's dating 12 dudes, but come on, it's okay. I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. (laughs) I told somebody that I'd say that today. I'm sorry. I'm not, it's not my job to convict or condemn you. It is not, it's the Holy Spirit's job. It's my job to say what I feel like he's saying. I mean, that's just real. We compare ourselves. And I'll talk about the shows that I enjoy watching are not feeding into my soul love, peace, joy. So what is it worth and why? For a cheap laugh, for a cheap thrill, or for a little bit of entertainment? Is that all that we've become? Is that all that's important? Some of you may think today, say, Jay, you're kind of getting petty. You know, this is where we're at. No, I'm not. You know, we're a growing church right now. And we have the opportunity 
I'm grateful to God that he's bringing people in, that people are connecting, that people feel like this is their family, this is their home. It's, it's amazing. I'm so grateful. But I'm not, I'm not worried about filling every chair if nothing's happening outside of these four walls. I'd rather have five people that are just really pouring in and that can support my salary than a hundred. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> than to have this place completely filled with people who aren't impacted by the power and the love and the presence of the Father. There's enough of that happening. But we fall into this lie of the mirror of comparison where we say, well, we're better than. Jesus saves, but Jesus also lived his life. If you're going to compare yourself to anything, you put your mirror up to him. Because if you say you're a Christian, that means you're a reflection of Christ. And you say, well, I'm never going to be Jesus. Yeah, me neither. But you know what? I can do things today that make me more like him tomorrow, that set me up for success tomorrow. I can make choices today to do things or to not do things. You see, just as much as the things you do, the things you allow in your life create as much culture and value in you. You can, you can cut some things out of your life. You can make a choice to repent for the things that break his heart. But what was Jesus' message? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And then to love your neighbor as yourself. How many of you like salvation? If you like it, don't you think your neighbor would like it? But here's the biggest problem that I have. And when I was young in ministry, this was the biggest thing that kept me from evangelizing is I realized I wasn't perfect and that I was going to do something eventually that was going to mess that person up because they are going to put me on a pedestal and then I'm going to fall and then they're going to fall. And I'd just rather not do that because it's easier for me to live my life and hide my sin rather than to be open and honest about uh, what I'm dealing with and what I'm struggling with. So in turn, I just wouldn't say anything. And I'm probably the only one in here. You know, some of you have allowed failed relationships in your life. You've allowed addictions in your life. You've allowed your past. You've allowed fear. You've allowed frustration. You've allowed failed businesses. You've allowed, you know, language barriers. You've allowed all these things to keep you from speaking out. Here's a, here's a novel idea. Get rid of that crap. Oh, we said crap twice on a Sunday. Jody. Get rid of that junk in your life. Do things that put you on a path to live a life with clean hands and a pure heart. Stop feeding your soul the junk you're feeding it. Evangelism isn't about what you do, it's about what you live. And as a church, who do, you want to, who do we want to be? You know, church is made up of a bunch of individuals, and I'm preaching this today because I want individuals to be healthy, to be whole, because I believe in you. I believe in the destiny you have in your life. But why do we allow such petty junk and petty stuff to dictate our destiny. My biggest conviction, th this week I was convicted because I, s I tend to sit at home and I'm just on my phone, on Facebook or on texting or emailing. I think these things are important. And I looked over this week and my daughter's sitting next to me and she's just doing the exact same thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am reproducing myself here. So you know what? It's easy. I take my phone, put it in the room, plug it in, 
and I go spend time with my family. You have a problem with addiction, whether it's, maybe it's pornography. Here's an idea. Take your phone, go plug it in, go be with your family. You have things that trigger you. Here's an idea. Don't be around those things. Maybe you say, every time I hang out with this person and every time I go out to this place, I always tend to get in trouble. Here's an idea. Don't do that. Because you're determining your destiny by the choices that you make. And not only are you determining your destiny, you're determining the destiny of other people because you have a light. Quit being so selfish with your light. The light I have is not just for me, so I can say, look at my life. Woo-hoo. So I can come alongside my brother and I can say, hey, see the road? It's right here. Here, take my light for a little bit. Use my light. Let's go, find, let's go find your own light. Let's, 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 let's walk down this path together for a little bit until you can get yours, and then you can go help somebody else. We're not willing to get rid of the junk in our own lives so that we'll shine. How many of you are glad we're talking about the hard stuff? Some of you are like, this is not what I bargained. This is not what I put in for. This is not what I think. Corey, we won't. Corey, you want to come up for a second? I'm going to go ahead and tell you Corey's biggest sins. <laughs> no, this way, Corey. <laughs> I have a little more, but you know what? I'm going to stop. That's what I love about doing a series is you can just stop because we'll pick up here next week. I told you just a second ago, it's not my job to convince you of sin. It's my job to tell you the truth. Every single one of you in this place has had attitudes about something this past week. It's probably something you saw on TV, to be honest with you. Or it's probably something you read on Facebook. question in all of our lives simply boils down to this. What is more important to me than a life lived for Christ? Is it friends? Is it an addiction? Is it money? Is it fear of other people? Is it status? Ask yourself, what is more important? And I'm not saying in your head, because we would all say in our heads, no, God is number one. He's, he, he's everything to me. I'm talking about in your life talking about the way you live your life. What is more important to you than a life lived for Christ? And not only that, what's more important to you than your friends living in eternity in heaven? Because you're putting things ahead of that. I am. Close your eyes right now. I mean, you don't need to look at me any more than you already have today. And ask yourself the question and be honest. Look at your life and say, okay, by the choices I make and the things that I say and the things that I do in the life I live, what have I placed before God in my life? Because those are the things that are keeping your light hidden. Those are giving, things that are giving permission for darkness to increase. For some of you, it's just your past. You just can't get past the fact that you failed. 
whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a job, whether it's as a parent, as a father, maybe you failed as a son or a daughter, and you say, I, okay, that was it, I'm done. Today is a new beginning. You can't restart, but you can start today. You can't start over, but you can start today. Some of you in this place, more than anything else, you need to come to the front of this place and get on your face before God and say, God, I thank you so much for the opportunity for repentance. That's a whole nother sermon. I thank you that today I have the opportunity to lay some things down in my life, to put priority on on our relationship and my family, to put my heart where your heart already is. Thank you for repentance. I'm not saying you have to get out of your seat in order to repent, but I'm saying for some of you, you need to take a step right now. And I'm not going to count to three. I'm not going to do anything crazy. If you feel in your heart, you're saying, yes, I know exactly what that is. I know I need to lay it before God. Get up and do it. What's keeping you from doing it? Are you afraid? What are people going to think? I'll help you. Because I'm first. (laughs) To say, God, I am... (laughs) I have screwed this thing up over and over. I don't want anything to hinder my life. I turn away from the things that have kept me from you. Father God, I choose you. Come on, if today's a new beginning in your life, I just want you to stand with me and sing this this morning. That to worship you. Today is a new beginning. Today is a new beginning.
church, we will preach with everything we have that Jesus saves. But with our lives, we will also preach the message of Jesus Christ, that is to love people. That is to find the down and out. To be a family. To walk together and serve together in the unity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell every single person in this place today one more thing. I doesn't, it doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what you do. The past is the past. Like my friend on Kung Fu Panda said, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Today's a new day. You get to choose how it ends. Every single one of you get to choose how it ends. This is where it starts. Before the Father. And this is all I have to worship you. This is why I live. This is why I breathe. This is why I am. To worship you. When you're ready to go today, I encourage you to go with all the blessings of the Father to release love on the people around you everywhere you go. If you'd like to stay in worship a little longer, you're more than welcome to. If you want to stick around in the back and just be family and just love on each other for a little bit, please do. But today starts new. Amen? God bless you.
Street. 